Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and over the next few videos I want to have a look at setting up your signal chain so that you've got control of your audio levels through the process of recording and mixing. But I want to start by having a look at metering. There are certain things in recording that we tend to take for granted and meters are one of them. And in this video, I'm going to share something with you that I wish someone had shared with me when I moved from analog to digital recording. When I started out recording, which was on a Tascam Porter Studio way back when, it had these things, VU meters, volume unit meters. And the general idea was that when you recorded, you kept the needle kind of bouncing around here. You didn't want it going into the red, but you didn't want it getting too far below zero. Um, there was the dreaded tape noise issue, and that applied when I moved from 4-track to 8-track. We were still using tape, we were still trying to keep our signal-to-noise ratio out of tape hiss range. So, when I moved over to digital recording, naturally I assumed that zero there was the same as zero here. <laughs> wrong. Wrong in a big way. Um, and as a result, some of the stuff I recorded early on was very distorted because it clipped. Whereas with my old tape machine, when you went past zero, you started to get into tape saturation and you got some nice analog warmth. Once you go past zero over here, it clips and it clips badly you get digital distortion, which is just plain nasty. Nothing nice and warm about it at all. So, where is the correlation? Where should we be aiming for? What does zero over here equate to over here? Well, you may begin to guess by the number of times the figure 18 appears on the screen, but that's not an absolute truth. Professional sound studios reference 0 VU as minus 20 dB on full scale, whereas a lot of people, if you read the literature, pick minus 18 dB as being the reference point. And indeed, this is the Klanghelm VU meter, and although you can set the reference level for 0 in dB just by adjusting here, I can go 20, I can go anywhere I like, I can go up to 1, should I be foolish enough to do so, it actually comes defaulted at minus 18. So what does that leave us in terms of what it all means? Well, I'm going to leave you by playing a short piece of the most unmusical thing you can have, a sine wave. I uh, downloaded this sine wave off SoundCloud. It is a 1 kHz sine wave and it's normalized at minus 18 dB. So I'm going to play a short clip. You will see that Cubase will read this as a minus 18. The peak will be minus 18. The perceived loudness will be minus 18. The BU meter will perceive it as being zero. You'll see the RMS um, will be slightly lower. That's because obviously a sine wave isn't at maximum amplitude for the full time it's sounding. It comes up and down and it averages out at minus 3 dB uh, or 3 dB below the actual peak level. So to prove the point here's a bit of that sine wave. So, what we can say is that the levels that we used to look at in terms of naught on our VU meter are not the same as naught on our dB full scale meters, but in fact are somewhat lower. The whole point of this is that if everything is at zero on a full scale meter, you've got nowhere to go. As you start to add tracks to your mix, 
the level is going to increase and so you're going to have to start pulling these faders down. The problem with that is that if you reduce them by 5 dB it's a fairly long throw but if you look down here 5 dB is barely movement at all. So what we want is to have the best control we can have over our faders and if everything's slamming from the start we're going to end up with all our faders down here whereas what we want is to be able to start so to reduce them to have better control up here. In the next video I'll look at how you can achieve that when you start a mix. Until then, you take care of yourselves.